few months ago I built an awesome paludarium for this group of baby vampire crabs. But as they are starting to get a little too big for this space and need more room, I need to make some changes. So in this video, we're going to strip that tank down, see how things are going and build a brand new paludarium. But before we add the next generation of babies, Kevin is going to call this little ecosystem home, at least until he gets his claws back. So let's get started. Now that the tank has been stripped back and cleaned, we can start the new project. For this build, I'm just using random bits and pieces I have laying around from some of my other projects. So it's essentially going to be a free build, which is always nice. I've already got the land and water barrier in place, which will separate the land from the water section. Next step is to add clay balls to the back section of the tank. This will be our drainage layer and our base to work from. Clay balls work as a natural filter and will house beneficial bacteria to help keep the tank nice and healthy. Remember, when you add the clay balls, you need to make sure they're a little bit higher than the soil, just so that the soil and the water don't mix and cause nutrient spikes. The clay balls in place, it's time to add a barrier to prevent the soil from getting into the water section. I like to use garden weed matting for this, but window screening is also another good option, but you can also use other materials, very similar, that work just as well. Try to hide the edges as best as you can, it can be tricky, but it definitely is worth the effort to make your tank look a lot more natural. Now that the substrate layer is in, it's time to add the soil. This tank isn't very deep, so I'm not going to be adding too much soil. For this, I'm going to be using organic fern mix. I haven't tried this mix before. I normally use bonsai mix, but this should be quite good for what we've got planned. I've also mixed some of the soil in from my previous build. This will ensure the tank is already seeded with worms, springtails, and other essential creatures. You don't have to use fern soil. Any organic soil will work fine. I have a nice simple hardscape plan for this tank, so I'm not going to be doing anything crazy. I'm just going to be using this single piece of wood. From memory, this is an older tree root that I found quite a long time ago. It still has the bark on, but this won't be an issue because it's not going into the water. I've had it laying around for quite a long time, but I finally found a good way to use it. So it's going into this tank. Surprisingly, it fits pretty well without any trimming or breaking any branches off. I think it looks pretty good like this. So it's time to start adding the main plants to the tank. As usual, I'm going to be using some ferns, some moss, and in this case, also some Monte Carlo. Vampire crabs love ferns, and ferns do really well in damp, humid environments as well, so everything works out great. In the left-hand corner, I'm adding this fern here. I'm not sure exactly on the species name for it. It was missing from the pot, so I don't know the actual name, so if you do know what this type is, just drop it in the comments. And on the opposite side of the tank, in the right-hand corner, I'm going to be adding this fern here. I believe it's called Nephrolepsis exaltata, but I'm not great with pronunciations. It's essentially just a very common fern species. With all the plants in, it's time to add a few little sections of moss to the tank. I like to use hypnum moss and fern moss for this. It's readily available in the woods not far from my house. And this little patch here is coming straight from one of my other tanks. It's also got a little bit of hydrocotyl japan in it, which I'm hoping will eventually creep down into the water section and become a nice addition to the aquatic part as well. But it also grows really well out of the water. The next part of the process was adding the Monte Carlo. And if I planned things a little bit better, I would have added this or out of the hardscape, but at the time I didn't think that far ahead and I didn't think it would be a problem. So although Monte Carlo is typically grown in aquariums, it can grow quite well outside of the water. There are a few things you need to meet though. You need to make sure you have really good light and you need to make sure the environment is really humid. So if you were to have this tank without the lid, the Monte Carlo would dry out and die. However, with the lid and a nice level of humidity, it will grow perfectly fine. Before we start the next part of the tank, I just want to take a quick look at how things are going, give everything a bit of a mist so nothing dries out, then we can start the aquatic section. For the aquatic section, I'm using gravel this time. Normally I use sand. Uh, this stuff's quite bright. I probably should have got a little bit darker color, something to match the rocks a little bit better. But as this stuff ages and starts to take more of a natural color with some algae, it's not gonna look so ridiculous. I'm not going to be making it too thick this time because the thinner it is, the easier it's going to be to clean. The tank's coming together really well at the moment, but there's still quite a few little details we need to add, starting with some creeping plants. For the finishing touches, I'm going to be adding some Ficus pumilla, aka creeping fig. Hopefully this will take hold nice and quickly and start climbing over the hardscape. This is just trimmings from my main plant and it should take hold pretty nicely, as long as you plant it nice and deep into the substrate. Getting close to the end of the build, it's time to add water. Remember, for vampire crabs, you need to meet the following requirements. They aren't all that fussy, but you do need to make sure you have good water quality. 
By now you're probably wondering what about a filter and what about a heater. So for a heater, we're going to be using a heat mat, which I'm going to stick to the outside of this tank, just on the back somewhere. As for a filter, this tank's going to be extremely low bio load, starting with one single crab. It's also going to have quite a few floating plants. So in this case, I'm going to be using Sylvinia. I've already added Monte Carlo and at a later date, I'm going to add some moss. It's now time to add our little inhabitant. So this is Kevin, Kevin the vampire crab, and he's been living in this container for six weeks now. The longest I've known a crab to live without claws is seven weeks, so he's doing really well, and hopefully he's gonna make it to his next molt and grow his two claws back. I'll leave a link in the description for the full video about Kevin if you wanna check that out and hear about his backstory. For any other tank that I set up, I'd normally wait at least a month for it to cycle, but with this single crab coming from the container he's already in, he's going to be perfectly fine moving into this. This tank was also built with a lot of stuff that's already been cycled. Soil's already come from an existing tank. We've added springtails already. The Salvinia has come from a tank that was already cycled, so it's already got beneficial bacteria, and it's going to cycle really quickly. Plus, one little crab. Kevin is going to have a really low bio load, so it's not going to be an issue. However, for any other circumstance, I highly suggest waiting at least one month, preferably three.